five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. And lift off. Vehicle is pitching downrange. What a beautiful day for a rocket launch here. As you can see, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from, from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying our stack of 60 Starlink satellites to orbit. Moments ago, we throttled the engines down in preparation for max Q, uh, or the maximum aerodynamic pressure that the rocket the will see. Vehicle is supersonic. Vehicle is supersonic and we should be uh, passing through max Q here in just a few seconds. Vehicle has reached maximum aerodynamic pressure. We just passed through max Q, and in about a minute, we will have three events happening back to back, and that's main engine cutoff, or MECO, stage separation, and second engine start one. So first main engine cutoff, that is where all nine Merlin 1D engines that you can see burning right now will shut off to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation. And this is where the first stage separates from the second okay, stage. Again, the show has begun. Uh, with the first stage making its way back to land on our drone ship, just read the instructions, while second stage continues on its journey to its third event, which is second engine startup one. Now this is where the one MVAC engine on our second stage lights up and propels that second stage along with our Starlink satellites to orbit. What a beautiful view of those nine M1D engines burning there on beautiful clear day. And we're coming up on main engine cutoff shortly here in just about 10 seconds. Miko. You can see in that beautiful footage that we did just have Miko, stage separation, and second engine startup one. Those grid fins are coming out on the first stage there on the left. And in just a few seconds, we should have our fairing deploy. <laughs> you heard the call out and you can see on your video there that we have had successful fairing deploy. And again, today's flight marks the 40th time that SpaceX has reflown a Falcon fairing half since November of 2019. Now, this is also our first fifth reflight for one of our fairing halves and a third for the other half. In order to recover these fairing halves for future flights, we will be attempting to recover them again with the help of our recovery vessels, Go Searcher and Go Navigator. Stage two continuing towards its first orbit on the right-hand side of your screen. Left-hand side of your screen, you can see Falcon 9's first stage reorienting itself for its next two activities. That'll be two burns to come back safely to Earth. First of those being of the entry burn. That's where we'll ignite three of the Merlin 1D engines to help slow down the first stage as it re-enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn will happen closer to the drone ship. That's the landing burn. That's where we'll ignite just the single center Merlin engine. That'll bring the first stage's velocity rapidly down to zero for a soft touchdown. On the right-hand side of your screen, second stage continuing to burn nom nominally. Acceleration right down the middle. 
and you can see uh, the, the glow of the nozzle there. Now, if you are just catching up with us, we did have a... Stage two on nominal trajectory. We did have a successful launch of Falcon 9 from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And uh, first stage on the left-hand side of your screen is headed back to our drone ship named Just Read the Instructions, stationed out in the Atlantic Ocean. Second stage heading on the right-hand side of your screen is headed to its first orbit. As a reminder, today's mission does mark the second flight for this booster. If you happen to catch fairing separation earlier, the this will be the first fifth flight for one of those fairing halves and the third flight for the other half. Reusability is critical to what we do here at SpaceX. It allows us to help, uh, allows us to refly the most expensive parts of the rocket, and that drives down the cost. Now you can see the grid fins extended on the left-hand side of your screen. Every so often, you'll see uh, puffs of white gas. That's attitude control coming from the first stage to help reorient us to get the nine Merlins on Falcon 9 pointed towards the Earth. Those Merlin engines are optimized for thrust at sea level. They help Falcon 9 achieve about 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. Uh, meanwhile, the Merlin vacuum is optimized for space. That's why it has that larger nozzle. Now, coming up here is entry burn. Keep an eye out on the left-hand side of your screen. Stage one, entry burn startup. Stage one, FTS is safe. This burn expected to last about 20 seconds. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. And successful shutdown of those three Merlin engines. Now, if you followed along our missions in the past, you'll you'll know that soot stage on two the first stage on nominal trajectory. is an indication that the rocket has flown before. That's because we use rocket-grade kerosene, or RP-1, as our fuel in Falcon 9. That's a carbon-based propellant. As we burn it, it generates soot. So with the engines down, as we're coming in through the Earth's atmosphere, the soot from the plume comes back up on the first stage and uh, deposits, deposits it along the surface of the vehicle. Now, if we didn't do that entry burn, uh, the first stage would come in very quickly in the atmosphere, and the aerodynamic forces could stage cause it to rip apart. Sonic. So that's why we do that entry burn. And we uh, did temporarily lose the video feed, but we'll uh, hopefully, there we go. Beautiful view. Now, at, at this point, since we're in the Earth's atmosphere, those grid fins will take over orientation uh, and trajectory back towards the drone ship. Now coming up, stage one landing burn will begin. Shortly after landing Terminal burn guidance. ends, landing burn startup. the second stage's engine will uh, shut down. We should be in our expected orbit there. So keep an eye out, see if we can get a video feedback for the first stage. Stage one landing leg deploy. Fantastic, right down the middle. That's our 85th successful recovery. 100th, uh, 18th successful launch of the Falcon 9. Now keep a, an ear out here for second engine cutoff number one on the second stage. And with that, navi navigation officer, uh, we did hear the call out there for Seco. Navigation officer will be Expected checking loss of signal. the Cape. parameters. Make sure we are in our intended orbit. Nominal orbit insertion. Fantastic news. So from here, we do have a coast phase followed up by the second burn of our second stage engine. These additional burns allow us to modify the orbits of the payload more efficiently than if we were to launch directly into our final orbit. That's just one of those quirks of orbital mechanics. Um, and today, our second stage will coast for 35 minutes until we reach Apogee, which is the highest point of the orbit. Views here on your screen of uh, the fairing and then the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. So once we reach the highest point of the orbit, orbit we will reignite the second stage for a short burn. And you can follow along the progress of the second stage with this animation showing where we are around the Earth 
We'll be back here at T plus 44 minutes and 30 seconds for second engine start number two. See you soon. Welcome back to the live webcast of SpaceX's 29th Starlink, mi Starlink mission. We had an on-time liftoff at 2.59 p.m. Eastern Time from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Second stage continues to look good, and our second engine startup two is just a few moments away here at T plus 45 minutes and 30 seconds. Now this will be a very short burn, only 1.58 seconds of our MVAC engine that you can see on your screen there. And this will help us get into a more circular orbit for our Starlink deploy. Hopefully we can catch that really quick burn on video. Now before this small burn, we have been pulsing the settling thrusters on our stage two to keep the propellant at the bottom of the tanks, ready to be pulled into the engine pump when it spins up here in just a few seconds. And we're just waiting for acquisition of signal from our ground station. S2 burn two complete. <laughs> Good burn. Looks like the video came back just in time for us to see that burn there. And now we're just looking for a confirmation of a good orbit. Um, Nominal orbit insertion. You heard the call out for the nominal orbit. Uh, we have another coast phase coming up here before we deploy our next batch of Starlink satellites into orbit. During this time, the spacecraft will start to spin along its central axis, giving the Starlink satellites the momentum they need to space themselves out over time after they deploy. We'll see you back here at around T plus one hour and two minutes. And welcome back to our broadcast for our 29th Starlink mission. Now, if you're just joining us, we had a successful liftoff from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at 2.59 p.m. Eastern Time, then successful stage separation, recovered our first stage for the second time on our drone ship named Just Read the Instructions, and had two successful second stage Merlin vacuum engine startups. So uh, we had some video shots there of the second stage. We're awaiting our next major event, which will be payload deployment of the Starlink satellites. Now, over the last coast phase, uh, we've started to spin the second stage a little bit. You can actually see maybe the sun might pop into frame there. And that's to help those uh, Starlink satellites space themselves out after payload deployment. And here's a shot of the top of the second stage camera looking up at the Starlink satellites. So coming up, payload deployment. Starlink deploy confirmed. So that's confirmation of payload deployment. You saw the mechanism separating away, and now the Starlink satellites starting to make their way away from the second stage. Shortly, they will deploy their solar array. Wow, that's a beautiful shot of uh, Earthrise in the background. Um, but shortly, they will deploy their solar array, and then over the next few days and weeks, they'll start to distance themselves out They've got onboard ion thrusters, and that'll help them make their way into their final operational orbit. And with that successful deployment of our satellites, we'll bring today's webcast to a close. Thank you to the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. And of course, thank you to all of our viewers and all of our Starlink customers using our beta service at this time. If you're interested in being a part of our beta program, head over to Starlink.com and sign up. Hope you enjoyed the webcast today, and we'll see you soon.